Pasture dieback is a condition that's killing summer growing pasture grasses. So that's what we might call our subtropical or our tropical or our C4 um, grass species. So what does pasture dieback look like? So the first signs is leaf discoloration. Discoloration is going to vary on species. So some show a more yellowing of the leaf tips, others it might be red or orange. Um, some it's even more reddy purpley kind of discoloration. There's many things that can cause leaf discoloration. So it's worth trying to rule out other likely causes as well before assuming dieback. Uh, from discoloration to plant death usually occurs uh, within a growing season. Um, so we're talking months rather than years for this to occur. It starts off in patches and those patches um, get bigger, uh, particularly following significant rainfall events um, during spring, summer and autumn when these grasses are typically actively growing is when we see um, the biggest increase in the size of affected areas. Uh, we're also seeing uh, weeds colonise um, areas that have been affected and killed by pasture dieback. Dieback is only affecting our summer growing grass species. Legumes are unaffected, um, same with broadleaf species, but also things um, such as brassicas and herbs such as chicory and plantain. These might be some options to sow into dieback affected areas because um, we know that they're not affected by pasture dieback. So pasture dieback was first seen back in the 1990s in buffalo pastures in central Queensland. Um, and it was quite a problem for that time. But it wasn't until 2015 we really started seeing the condition affect other grass species um, and also really start to move. So now it's been identified as far north as the Atherton Tablelands up in Queensland and south down into the Tweed Valley in northern New South Wales. Since then we have seen the condition move further west into the more interland um, and also further south down the coast. There has been quite a lot of research done, particularly in Queensland, into what is causing pasture dieback. To date there's been no real clear answer, which sort of highlights the complexity of the condition. So it's quite likely there's an environmental component, whether that's drought, whether that's um, significant rainfall events, whether that's temperature, whether that's poor soil fertility, um, and probably a pathogen component as well. So whether that's a bacteria, a virus, a fungus, or an insect. So what we don't know about mealybug is whether it actually is the causal agent for pasture dieback, or whether the plants are stressed because of environmental conditions, and the mealybug just comes along and it's the final thing that causes the grass pasture to fall over. Grasses that are showing symptoms of pasture dieback are often unpalatable to livestock, um, so they're poorly utilised. Um, and as dieback patches grow and there's a bigger area of um, dead grasses, um, there can be significant loss in productivity for producers um, and carrying capacity for properties. So we're really asking people to be on the lookout for pasture dieback and if they suspect it, um, to get in contact with us um, so either contact New South Wales DPI or local land services and that's really just to help us track the spread of the condition um, so we know a little bit more about it and hopefully we can be more targeted with our research into pasture dieback. <laughs>